I'll be presenting on the on a recent Delhi High Court judgment wherein the court has reiterated on the importance of a reasoned order. So uh, not just in this case, but and not just in India, so across the world, the courts have laid down that a speaking order or a reason, reasoned order is as equivalent to being the third pillar of natural justice. It's an indispensable part of a sound judicial system. It's the best practice of good administration and a quasi-judicial authority must record its reasons in support of its conclusion. The purpose of recording the reasons is to serve the wider aspect of the principle of justice, which is justice must not only be done, but it also must appear to be done. Now coming to the case, Kohler Company versus the Registrar of Trademarks, which is decided by the Honorable High Court of Delhi on 3rd August, 2022. We all know Kohler, it's a very famous worldwide for its bathroom and kitchen fittings and appliances. So coming to the facts of the case, Kohler, which was the appellant herein, filed an appeal against the Registrar of Trademarks uh, before the Honorable High Court of Delhi, challenging an order passed by the Registrar of Trademarks on 25th October 2018 and a letter dated 6th November 2018, wherein they denied Kohler a registration over the word mark Sterling under classes 6, 11 and 21 on the ground that the same is objectionable under sections 9 and 11 of the Trademarks Act. The impugned order dated 25th October reads as a hearing in respect of the above matter came up before me on 17 10 2018 and the following is to be communicated to the applicant or agent the trademark applied for is objectionable under section 9 and 11 of the act and the application is accordingly refused the, this is the relevant excerpt from the impugned order and the relevant excerpt from the letter by the senior examiner of trademarks dated 6 november 2018 reads as with reference to the above and the request on form PMM dated 30 10 2018, it has been decided by the Registrar of Trademarks to inform you that the hearing in respect of above was held on 17 10 2018 and the said application is refused on the following grounds. The advocate Sriram appeared, argued, made submission, heard, checked application, reply to examination report. It appeared that reply is not satisfactory as to examination report. Registered or pending similar cited marks with same goods is on record. Mark is not distinctive. So objection under section 9 sustained. Moreover, it is proposed to be used. So benefit of proviso of section 9 is not provided. Hence refused. Section 9, they have cited section 9 subclause 1 subclause A, which is the trademark is devoid of any distinctive character. That is to say, not capable of distinguishing the goods or services of one person from those of another. And section 111A, which deals with relative grounds for refusal of registration. The said trademark is refused for registration because of its identity with an earlier trademark and similarity of goods or services covered by the trademark. The appellants, which is Kohler herein, submitted that neither the order nor the subsequent letter gave any reasons for rejecting the submissions made by the appellant against the examination report. The examiner cited a total of 18 registered or pending similar marks as against the mark in question. Out of those 80, 12 had been abandoned or removed or not even renewed. And for the remaining, the goods in question were entirely different. Kohler further submitted that as far as section nine objection is concerned, the appellant had also filed trademark applications under classes six, 11 and 21 for the mark Sterling inspired by the realities of life, which have been advertised. The mark in question, which is Sterling under classes 6, 11, and 21, were filed as an associated mark in terms of section 8, 16 of the Act. Section 16 deals with registration of associated marks. The court observed while finding merit in appellant's submissions and stated, the impugned order and the letter do not reflect application of mine. They do not address the aspects raised by the applicant they merely contain the conclusions of the senior examiner of trademarks and hence they are a re unreasoned order. Because the impugned letter and the order were unreasoned, the court opined that the matter deserves to be remanded back to the senior examiner of trademarks 
and they specifically asked the senior examiner to reconsider the aspects raised by the appellant in detail and thereafter take a considered decision on whether the application of the appellant can proceed for advertisement. The court also requested the senior examiner of trademark to specifically consider the facts that 12 of the marks cited were not renewed, removed, or abandoned. The other marks, which is the associated mark of the appellant itself, had proceeded for advertisement. And the, and the, uh, the previously filed marks under class 11 and 21 of the application of the appellant had not faced any objection so far. The court passed an order. They allowed the appeal hearing, set aside the impugned order and letter, and ordered no costs. So that's it from my side. Thank you. I'd like to quickly summarize uh, the text and the context we had discussed today. We have discussed several judgments, uh, and my colleagues uh, took uh, the audience through different judgments and read out paragraphs from those judgments uh, clearly. Uh, to start with uh, Ms. Kavya's uh, uh, case that she spoke about at the end, this case clearly points out that if the order is not well reasoned, then that can be a ground to challenge the order. And based on that context, you can go to court and get the order, uh, get the court to remand it back to the trademark office to reconsider it and provide a reasoned order. Uh, the same note, uh, Ms. Anusmita spoke about uh, a recent design judgment. Is, is this also Delhi High Court? Yes. Yeah, I think ah. Delhi High Court uh, has been quite proactive uh, in not only uh, speedily deciding cases, but also providing clarity on different aspects of uh, uh, intellectual property law. So in this case, Anusmita, clearly pointed out uh, what the Delhi High Court said with respect to uh, when a publication will be considered to be a prior publication, uh, what happens when a trademark is claimed with respect to a design, as well as uh, under what circumstances can there be piracy. So based on a lot of times in design cases also, uh, people cite publications that are not applied to articles. Uh, under those circumstances, it may be noted that uh, if a publication is cited to challenge a design and that publication is not applied to an article, then that would not be a valid publication to negate novelty of uh, that particular design that is in question. And this context may also be considered. Also, Geetanjali spoke about uh, opposition proceedings, gave uh, through light on the actual procedure of post grant opposition and uh, what the courts have spelled out with respect to the dates before which uh, the evidence can or cannot be submitted, as well as uh, how proceedings have to be conducted in a speedy and expeditious manner. Uh, before that, uh, Ipshita gave uh, a very uh, lucid and interesting presentation about uh, different aspects. In fact, we have been discussing uh, the data protection bill for a while now. We have given comments to the Sri Krishna uh, committee as well. Uh, we also pointed out uh, certain issues with respect to the bill that was proposed by the Sri Krishna committee and later the bill that was uh, proposed by the government. Uh, Ipshita pointed out that it has been rightfully withdrawn and hopefully we'll see a better bill. Uh, it is in fact necessary that uh, we have a data protection law in place sooner than later. Hopefully it will happen uh, maybe during the next session of uh, the parliament. She also spoke about an interesting case with respect to copyrights uh, where uh, author's rights where uh, author's rights as well as copyrights were uh, dis discussed. Uh, it is important to note that a lot of times when you publish books, uh, there may be clauses in those agreements which state that you cannot publish a book with a similar subject or with a similar theme with another publisher or by yourself. Uh, this case shows that uh, a particular clause in an agreement will not prevent the author to uh, publish another book on the, uh, on the same theme. Also, uh, we would like to encourage everyone to settle 
any long pending rectification or opposition proceedings. Uh, uh, those of you who have participated in these uh, proceedings will know that these are uh, very long drawn and arduous uh, uh, you know, processes. And if it makes business sense to settle these proceedings, the uh, Indian Trademark Office has given uh, a great opportunity uh, to settle them and also indicate your settlement to the Trademark Office so that they are immediately able to reflect those on the register. Uh, and this proactive measure of the trademark registry may be uh, duly utilized. Uh, before that, Anjali spoke about uh, claims. She also discussed the much cited Ahmed Laroche uh, case. She spoke about what are claims, what are different types of claims, how can claims be construed, and how, sh uh, how what courts have said about construction of claims and their invalidation. Uh, the, the contexts from that case are continuously and uh, consistently used uh, uh, on a daily basis in patent uh, practice and uh, may be, uh, you know, may take a note of uh, while you continue with your uh, work as a patent practitioner or a business which is into patent filings. Uh, before that, we discussed about uh, when a divisional application can be filed. I believe a lot of it would not be heard. Uh, having said that, we have published a post uh, on our blog with respect to that particular case, which spells out principles uh, uh, regarding divisional applications. Uh, some of these principles are uh, well known, uh, but it's good to have all these principles in, in a single place, and this judgment does that. Uh, and the context uh, of those principles uh, may be considered while defining strategies for filing patent applications uh, while, while drafting claims uh, based on uh, whether a particular applicant is seeking to file divisionals in the future or not. So that's pretty much it uh, from text and context for this week. We look forward to uh, meeting all of you next month again uh, to talk about text and context with one and I. Thank you. Thank you, sir. With that, we come to an end for text and context with an IT, and we hope to see you all next month. Thank you. Bye.